Dear learners, I am Christina Georgi, your academic counsellor for the MEG program. Today we will deal with the course code MEG01 titled British Poetry. So as per the request of many of our learners, this session will be recorded by me. I will share the link for your effective preparation for the upcoming TEE. What do you mean by TEE? Your term and examination. So hence, I would like to tell you that I will guide you by explaining the key concepts, the main points to remember. We will also discuss the major points or rather the most important questions and also some of the previous questions from this particular topic of discussion. View. So today we will deal with the very first block of MEG01. So this very first blog is titled Orientation for the Study of Poetry and the Medieval Poet Chaucer. As we already dealt with a prelude to the study of poetry, let's now move on to the age of Chaucer. So unit 3 of block 1 provides an overview of the age in which Chaucer lived and wrote. As you must have studied during your BA days, Geoffrey Chaucer was an English poet, author and civil servant. Remember, he has been called the father of English literature or the father of English poetry. You should be aware of such information if in case you are preparing for competitive examinations. So Chaucer was the outstanding English poet of the late Middle Ages. Since literature and society are closely related, an overview of the historical, cultural, intellectual and literary background of the age will certainly help you understand Chaucer's poetry effectively. You can certainly read about these aspects in Unit 3. Nevertheless, here are some important points that I would like to mention in class. So this was an age of transition. What kind of transition? Change from medieval to the modern. So as you know, if in case you remember, the Norman conquest. You must have studied this as part of the history of English language and literature course during your BA English days. So the Norman conquest in the year 1066 had brought in French words literary conventions and artistic tastes. So literature changed from oral to written. With printing, the anonymity gave way to authorship. So as a result, what happened? The author became important and the values of self-expression and originality were upheld. As a result, English got established as a literary language. Translations, adaptations and imitations appeared from Greek and Latin works. Chaucer's time also saw the revival of the alliterative verse. So while we mention the period of Chaucer, it is important to note that in Chaucer's youth, England was at the height of glory. Remember the victory in the Hundred Years War? I hope you do. But in course of time, there were some troubles though. Which are those troubles? You must have heard about the Black Death, the Peasants Revolt, etc. So this Black Death, attacks of bubonic plague happened in 1348. Economic troubles were there. Peasants Revolt happened in 1381 and so on. So all these are the historical background details. Please do read Unit 3 in order to understand all these background information. There won't be questions as such from this unit. But it is important for you to have a brush up of these ideas. And it might also help you prepare a biographical sketch or maybe a write upon Chosa. Maybe you will be able to prepare that if you read these background details. Now comes the question. Do you remember the contemporaries of Chaucer? Any of them? 
What do you mean by contemporaries? People who lived during his lifetime. I am referring to people of literature. Yes, Arun is correct. Langland. Who was Langland? We can say he was simply the voice of the poor. The voice of revolution. Yes, William Langland. Anybody else? There was one person related to the clergy. No, it's not Gateman. Yes, Gore is right. Aronima is right. Gore is right. He is someone who denounced all these contemporary follies during that time. He is a contemporary writer. I was referring to Wycliffe. Okay. Yes, correct. So he used to attack the corrupt clergy through spiritual protest, etc. So it's better for you to have an idea regarding the contemporaries of Chaucer. Now let's move on to unit 4. This particular unit deals with a general survey of Chaucer's poetry. Let me quickly summarize the life of Joseph for you. As you know, he was the son of a wealthy wine merchant. He was educated at St. Paul's Cathedral School. Then around 1366, he married Philippa Royt. You don't have to buy up all these things. It's just for your general understanding. You need to have an idea regarding his life. Only the major details that you should be aware of. Then about his death, he died in 1400. The causes are unknown. He was buried at what later came to be called Poets Corner in Westminster Abbey. He was the first poet to be buried in this place. Okay. And do you know who was his patron? Have you heard of John of Gaunt? Yes, John of Gaunt was Chaucer's patron. Those days they had patrons. Okay. And ah, one important question. So do you know in which dialect Chaucer used to write? Chaucer's dialect. Yes, very correct. Yes, East Midland dialect. This is one piece of information that could fetch you additional marks. Okay. He used to write in the East Midna Midland dialect. Yes. So, moving on to Chaucer's works. So, this is an important area. This unit is important because you can expect questions from here. So let's broadly divide Chaucer's works into three categories or three periods. Basically the early period, the middle period and last period. So those works that belong to the early period include translation of Roman de la Rose and the book of the Duchess. You can see these in unit 4. So about the translation of Roman de la Rose. This is Chaucer's incomplete translation and this was the most popular and influential of all French poems in the Middle Ages. The Roman de la Rose, that is the original title. And about the book of Duchess, it is one of the first of Chaucer's dream visions. This has a long prologue. And it depicts the sorrow of a bewar knight. Okay. And this knight is said to represent John of God. Okay. That is one important point that you need to know about this particular work. And it is written in octasyllabic couplets. Hmm? About the middle period, Parliament of Fowls. Okay. So the Parliament of Fowls is a dream allegory in seven lined. Chaucerian stanza. The rhyme scheme would be A B A B B C C. It is believed to be an allegory on the betrothal of King Richard II to Anne of Bohemia. 
you can read further details in the unit moving on to house of fame it is an unfinished dream allegory in octasyllabic couplets in many of chaucer's works you can see these dream allusions and allegory being used Another important work is Troilus and Cressida. It's a finished poem in Chaucerian stanza and it is Chaucer's longest single poem. It is modeled on Boccaccio's Philostrato. And there is another work, The Legend of Good Women. It is written in decasyllabic couplets. It has a prologue and nine tales. There are some other works also written by Chaucer, including Palamon and Arcite, Treatise on the Astrolabe, The Legend of Saint Cecilia, etc. So, if you are preparing for a write up on Chaucer, the main works are those that you should mention. You should have an idea regarding these main works by Chaucer. So, will you be able to write if they ask you a question? Yes, the thing is. The text might seem so very lengthy, but if you find time to read and mark the major points, you will be able to understand. For that matter, I believe my recording would also help you out because in my recording, I am mentioning only the key points. So, if you have your textbook with you, you can mark these key points and you can prepare effectively for your examination. So, shall we move on to the last period of Chaucer? Yes, so this period consists of one of the most renowned works of Chaucer, the Canterbury Tales. Okay. So, if you look at page number 75 of block 1, you can mark this. This is going to be an important section. Okay, page number 75, 76, 77. Make sure that you study these two pages. Okay, yes. About the Canterbury Tales, it is based on Decameron. Do you have any idea who wrote this particular work, Decameron? Have you heard of Boccaccio? Yes, it is based on Boccaccio's Decameron. So, it has a general prologue that consists of portrait gallery of 14th century England. And there are 29 pilgrims who meet at Tabard Inn. We can say there are 31 people including the poet and Harry Bailey. So these are pen pictures of 21 pilgrims. 23 of these pilgrims tell stories. And there are 24 stories in total. Why is that so? That is because Chaucer tells two stories. Namely, Tale of Sir Thorpus and Tale of Melibus. If in case you find this confusing, don't worry. Please spend time and read the study material. There, everything is given. So, the initial plan was to write 120 tales. But unfortunately, only 24 tales are told, of which two are interrupted before the end and two broken off soon after they begin. One thing to be aware of is that the group of pilgrims include a wide cross-section of English society. We learn about this when we look at the portrait gallery which is mentioned in prologue. So that's all for this particular unit. We'll continue in the next session.